Cutting the metal parts is quite straightforward as long as we pay attention to the fact that we use specific tools when working with metal. So we use this engineer's vise which has been placed into our woodworker's vise here. So we shouldn't be holding our metal, which in this case is aluminium, in the woodworker's vise at all. What we maybe want to do though is put a bit of cloth, this kind of rag, round about our metal and that's for the purpose of stopping it getting scratched. The metal we're using, the aluminium, is quite soft so I'm going to wrap this rag around it. I'm then going to leave about 225, 230 millimetres sticking out. So there you go. There's 230 millimetres sticking out there. Okay, there's my thumb at zero. There's the end of the metal, just at 230. And I'm going to place it in the vise like that. Now, the quantity of metal that we need for each upright for the clock is 210mm, so we need to cut this piece 210mm and we need to have a remaining piece that's 210mm. So, using a steel rule, find out where 210mm from the end actually is. So I'm holding the steel rule with 210 just at my fingertip there. You can see my finger there, that's just at 210mm. And I'm going to place that at the end of the metal. And I'm going to get my tool that I used to cut, my hacksaw. I'm just going to place that down 210 millimeters from the end. So you don't have to mark this with pen or pencil. You can if you want. But most people should be able to find out where 210 millimeters is from the end of the metal. And that's staying there for now as long as I don't start sawing. I'm just going to put my finger now there to stop my saw blade from sliding side to side and I'm just going to drag the saw backwards and forwards a couple of times. Don't worry, I'm not sawing my finger. And now I've created a slot, a little slot, a little kind of mark in the metal. I can just feel it in my fingernail just there. And I'm just going to check that that's 210 millimetres from the end of the material. 210, perfect. So now we can continue to saw through with this tool here called the hacksaw. You can have two hands at the back, or possibly one hand at the front, whatever you're happiest with. Don't overdo it, don't rush. Now, it started to drop down because I've cut so much metal away, there's no strength left to hold it together. Don't be tempted to break it back and forward. Okay, wait till you've cut through cleanly yourself. I can see now that I've got two pieces of metal. The smaller of the two is the piece that I cut to 210mm. This piece here is too long. So that will need to be cut shorter using the exact same process that you've just seen. What I'll we'll show you now is how to put a small chamfer on the end of the metal. So that's going to allow it to slot into the hole slightly more cleanly. You should already by now know what a chamfer is. A chamfer is a small 45 degree angled cut around the outside of something's edges. So we're just going to do that around the top of the circular top. Again, we'll put it into the vise and we'll use the rag to protect it and stop it from getting scratched. we we'll use a flat file to go around the outside of it and we just can hold the file lightly and allow the file to go around it in a circular pattern. At the same time, coordinating our hands to move the file backwards and forwards. So we're very, very lightly creating a chamfer on the end. This will also make the metal a bit safer to handle because if you've got any sharp, jaggy bits pointing off the end, sometimes that happens they're called burrs, it will remove them and it will make it smoother and safer. You should do this on both ends of both pieces, so you should do that four times, that's called chamfering. 